Good morning, my name is Francisco García Riesgo and I'm going to talk about a new early neural network approach to wavefront imaging on solar adaptive optics simulation. It has been developed by the members of ITEA, Institute of the University of Oviedo. Throughout this speech, the first result obtained by applying a multilayer perceptron network in the LAO solar configuration will be solved. First of all, I'm going to explain the motivation and the objectives of the research. The field of work is solar adaptive optics, a new optics technique that is still underdeveloped, which will be later more explained. Our improves are made for the reconstructor part, one of the most important parts of an adaptive optic system. The quality of the reconstructions made by currently adaptive optic systems do not have enough quality yet, due to a lot of reasons. Most of them are related with the reconstructor system like these ones. Solar adaptive optics is a relative new technique, so these tools still have room for improvement. Most of solar adaptive optics instruments have been developed by adapting those using night observations, and as we will see later, there are some important differences in the information received between night and day observation. To the previous point, data received in day observations after a pre-processing process where a lot of information is lost. In this work, we present a new neural network approach to reconstruct our system, where we take advantage of the ability of neural networks to work as reconstruct our system for our optics. that has been proved in night observations in recent years with, with quality the results. First of all, I'm going to briefly introduce what is an adaptive optics system. Adaptive optics is a methodology which aims the correction of the distortion produced by the atmosphere in the wavefronts that come from the celestial bodies. The main components of an adaptive optics system are the ones showed in the slide. The telescope, which receives the affirmative wavefront, the wavefront sensor, that obtains information on how which the wavefront received at this moment, this information is given to the reconstructor system. It calculates a correction that is passed to a deformable mirror that modifies its surface to reduce as much as possible the aberrations. This whole process should be done as quickly as possible, trying to do it in real time. Commonly, adaptive optic systems work in closed loop. It means that the first step is that they meet the wavefront is the DM. The DM is then deformed according to the correction for the turbulence of the previous system. The wavefront sensor then measures the remaining aberration since the wavefront has already been reflected in the mirror and part of this aberration is removed. Based on that measurement, the reconstructor calculates a new correction for the DM. There are several adaptive optics configurations. In this experiment, the solar GLAO configuration was chosen which is represented schematically on the right of the slide. The meaning of GLAO is, as you can see, ground layer adaptive optic system. This is a complex configuration for solar observation, which aim is to reconstruct the ground layer of the turbulence, the layer closest to the telescope, QP. This layer is characterized by presenting many differences between one direction and another, and having great variability over, over the time. For that reason, this configuration needs a set of Saharman focused in several directions to reconstruct the ground layer. The light received from the sun is focused by an array of lenses in the different subapertures of the Saharmans in a commonly used adaptive optic system. The Saharman calculates the slopes of the wavefront to pass them to the reconstructor to calculate the correction, which is then performed by the DM. To replicate the parameters of a real telescope, the Saharmans are formed, in this case, by 15 by 15 subapertures. In this new slide, we can see the difference in the received information between night and diurnal observation. On the right, there is an image of the light received by a 6 by 6 subaperture Saharman in night observation. While on the left, there is a 15 by 15 subaperture Saharman working on diurnal observations. As we can see in the example, in diurnal active optics, the focus image of the subaperture is saturated by the sun due to the closeness of the star. The 
Harman, use a new algorithm to calculate the slopes of the superpersons. They make correlations between the different superpersons. The image of each superperson is compared with one of them, always with the same. The result is a value represented by a spot on each superperson that will be used like the centric of night observations. As I have mentioned before, in this work, a new local structure system is designed based on multilayer perceptor neural network, a kind of artificial neural network. An artificial neural network can be defined as an interconnected group of computational units called neurons that try to mimic the behavior of biological neural networks. The neurons are situated in different layers, but are interconnected by nodes. The input information of a layer is the output of the previous one. The connections between different layers are regulated by weights. Artificial neural networks require a training process before the use where they need information of the input and the correct output to modify the weights between the layers and learn to give an answer to the problem. They are characterized by learning from the data. Different math algorithms can be used in this process. In the case of this work, but propagation algorithm was used. To train and test the network, we need big amounts of data. In the training process, we need the information received by the subharmonics of the system and the desired coefficients of learning as output. For the training process, using simulated data is ideal since it allows knowing perfectly the turbulence of its moment, unlike the real data. So the coefficients given to the network as output are the ideal coefficients. Then, for the testing process, in an ideal situation, real data should be used determine the quality of the reconstructions given by the artificial neural network. In this job, simulated data were used both for training and testing. The Durham Adaptive Optics Simulation Platform was employed to perform the simulation. DASP was developed by the Durham University. With this simulator, the user can determine all the parameters of the turbulence and the adaptive optics system. As the frame square and length are zero, the number, height, and weight of the turbulence layers or the velocity and directions of the wind. To generate the turbulence, the von Karman model is used. The platform allows to save much information of the simulation. As the image received by the Saharmans, image of the correlations calculated by the Saharmans, the profile of the turbulent phase, the slopes calculated by the Saharman, or the thermic coefficients of the turbulence. In previous studies made by this group, other kinds of artificial neural networks were used as the of systems for adaptive optics obtaining with results in night and solar observation. For this case, a multilayer perceptron was used with the slope measured by the six Saharman. On the right of the slide, you can see the topology of the neural network used. The first layer has the same number of neurons as the number of slopes given by the Sahar, 344. There is two slope values for each aperture, meaning the x value and the y value of the slope. Then there are two hidden layers that process the information. The first one is constituted by 2,124 neurons and for 450, the next one. Finally, the output layer consists of 150 neurons, the same number as output given, 150 coefficients of that. The hyperbolic tangent function is used as an activation function for all the layers. The neural network was trained with different topologies before the most adequate was set. The network was optimized with the Adam optimizer algorithm, using the mean square error as loss function. The training dataset consists of 260,000 samples, where the frame score and length was varying from 7 to 20 cm. The turbulence consists in only one layer, as the aim is to reconstruct the ground layer, and its height was varied from 0 meters to 20 kilometers.
obviously with much more representations of values between 0 meters and 5 kilometers. The test data set used consists in 3,000 samples with a turbulence layer of 10 cm of fresh score and length, a typical value in normal observations, varying its height from 0 meters to 6 km. The result will be shown in the next slides in terms of procedural wave from turbo. The residual wave from terror determines the similarity between two emits by calculating the root mean square error of the difference pixel by pixel of both emits. If both emits were the same, the root mean square error of the difference pixel by pixel would be zero. The higher the value, the more difference there will be between the emits. The residual wave from terror can be calculated that is showed in the slide being x the pixels of the original image, and y the reconstructed ones, and n the total number of pixels of both images. To determine the residual wave from error, the image of the turbulence phase are needed. The outputs of the neural network are the Cerny coefficient, so it is necessary to reconstruct the profile before the error is calculated. To reconstruct the profile, a function of the AO tools module is used, called phase from Thermix. The function allows the user to reconstruct the image of the profile of the phase, giving a list with the Therni coefficients. The greater the number of the coefficients, the more accurate the reconstruction will be. In the table, the results obtained for the test dataset are shown. It is recalled that this is a preliminary version in which it is intended to know if it is interesting to continue researching with neural networks in this field or not. For that reason, the results at first glance do not look really good. In any case, in the slides below, some examples have been chosen from the samples to check the result visually. Four different cases will be shown, ordered from the least to the greatest error. This is the case of the force chosen randomly with a lower residual error. For all the slides, the original turbulent reconstructor from the Therni coefficient given by the simulator is placed on the left, while the image of the right corresponds to the one predicted from the coefficient given by the neural network. In this case, the residual wave from error is lower than the mean over all the dataset. At first sight, the reconstructor one looks much more similar to the original one that could be expected. Despite being a high value of wave from error, the regions where the turbulence is more intensive are more or less the same in both images. The same for the ones with lowest intensity. Both images are very similar. The main difference between the images relies in the intensity values of the turbulence, which can be seen in the caption of the image. This is probably the cause of the high value of procedural wavefront error. For this couple of images, the wavefront error increases in comparison with the first case, but it is still less than the mean value. As in the previous case, the zones of high or low turbulence continue to coincide, but it is true that now, in the one obtained by the neural network, these zones are not so well defined nor do they coincide in such an exact way with the originals as in the previous case. In addition, the problem in the difference of values between both images continues to persist. In any case, despite the errors, this reconstruction quality would be acceptable to work in a real adaptive optics system. In this new pair of images, the error made in the reconstruction is already greater than the mean value of the entire dataset, as can be seen at the top of the slide. The areas of maximum intensity and their general shapes continue to coincide between both images, and there is also no great difference between their values. However, those regions in the image on the left do seem to be somewhat more diffuse than before. And finally, the last case, which consists in one of the worst of all the test dataset. Despite being the worst, there is still a similar general shape between both images although here we can find regions where the turbulent is not similar, such as the one rounded with a red cycle. Considerable difference in the turbulence value also occurs in some areas, as can be seen in the legend of the field. 
The work presented consists in the first result of applying neural networks as a constructor for a solar GLAO adaptive optics system. It was a new challenge for artificial neural networks, as they had to erase the information obtained from sensors oriented in several directions to a common term. Throughout the results presented, artificial neural networks have shown that are able to obtain the type of common turbulence of the sensors for distributing the areas with higher phase variation around the image of the turbulent field. However, at the moment, the learning coefficients predicted are not precise enough as the intensity of the turbulence phases do not correspond to the simulated one. These values still have much error that imply that the final value of the residual waveform error of the reconstruction are higher than expected. The reconstruct need to be improved before being a real alternative to be used in the real case. Future developments of this research will imply improve the artificial neural network models to make them more precise when obtaining the third coefficient values to decrease the residual wavefront error. Once the model has been improved, the next step could be to test it in different sun projects, to apply it with real data straight from a telescope or from an optical bench, and finally, to implement it and test it working in a real telescope system.